This weekend, the Child's Play remake slashed its way into theaters. That means today I'm gonna stop and rank all eight Chucky movies from the worst to the best. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Sean Chandler, and I started this channel because I was driving everyone around me crazy talking about movies way too much. If you can relate, you're probably in the right place and consider clicking that subscribe button. With that in mind, go ahead and share your ranking of the Child's Play movies down below in the comment section. With a franchise this diverse, we're gonna have wildly different rankings, and that's the fun part that we can talk about what we love and hate about these different movies. Just don't be a jerk about it. One final thing before we get started, people ask me constantly where I get my posters, where I get my Funkos and what equipment I use to shoot my videos. There's a link down below with a list of most of it and where you can buy it yourself. With that said, let's get started. In last place is The Seed of Chucky. This is one of the most audacious and bonkers sequels ever made, and in this case, that is not a good thing. They decided to go with this meta, dark horror comedy, and it just does not work. Here's a list of some of the gags inside of this movie. Chucky's kid, Glenn, is ugly and everyone tells him to his face as he starts crying. Hilarious! Glenn or Glenda, which is actually referenced to an Ed Wood film, is androgynous in design and gender confused. Hilarious! Glenn is emotionally fragile and when triggered, pees his pants. Hilarious! even when he's a real boy. Whoa! Jennifer Tilly, who plays Tiffany in these movies, plays herself in a Chucky movie in this movie. Okay, that one's a little funny. And wants to star in a Virgin Mary movie, so she's going to bang the director in order to get the role. I can't stop laughing. And those are just the running gags. More importantly, why am I spending so much time talking about the big jokes for a Chucky movie? But the humor isn't even the most distasteful thing about the movie. There's a plot line about impregnating Jennifer Tilly with a turkey baster. Now, I can appreciate that the writer wanted to try something a little bit different, but why on earth did the studio greenlight this? In seventh place is Child's Play 3. Here, the young Andy Barkley plotline seems just stretched a bit too far. It's nowhere near as tedious or painful to watch as the seed of Chucky, but there's also not much here to leave a mark. Besides the fact that it's set at a military school, it just kind of feels like more Chucky stuff. It's like a rehash of what we saw in the previous two films. But the military school setting didn't really do the franchise any favors. The movie spends way too much time on bullying and hazing, and the only reason I could come up with why they did that was to come up with a way to justify having one of the cadets being killed off by his peers, and you kind of feel okay with it because the guy was a jerk. But just in general, this movie's not embarrassing, but I'd rather watch almost any other film in the franchise, then rewatch this one. Next up is The Cult of Chucky. For me, this was a pretty frustrating film because it's like 50% interesting, fresh, new ideas for the aging franchise and 50% not so great ideas in poor execution. And maybe that's the problem here is that there's a few too many main plot streams going on that I don't think come together properly in the final act. You have Andy returning in his relationship with a severed Chucky head. You have Mika being institutionalized. You have Chucky spreading his soul and consciousness to multiple different dolls. And then at the end of the film, you have Chucky spreading his soul into another human. And I actually enjoyed the first two acts of the film when it was about Mika being kind of tormented by Chucky at the mental institution where people just thought she was crazy because, well, she's in a mental institution, as well as Andy hanging out with Chucky back in his apartment. But I just didn't enjoy where they took any of these plot lines in the third act. If you're going to have Andy and Nika team up to battle multiple Chuckies in an insane asylum, this feels like the least satisfying way to do that. Kicking off our top five is The Curse of Chucky. This was a nice return to form after the torture session that was Seed of Chucky. A few great things about this one. Right off the bat, Nika is a nice protagonist, a different type of lead character to put inside of this franchise. And being that she's in a wheelchair, it makes her vulnerable to Chucky in interesting and unique ways, especially in the house, the setting that they're in. But 
also it gives her some advantages over Chucky that are used nicely, like when she gets stabbed in the leg that it doesn't phase her one bit. I appreciated that this was a much more confined story, mostly just set at this one house. Also, they added some nice, interesting twists and turns into the lore, kind of giving things a little bit deeper of a backstory. And of all the films in this franchise, this is probably the most artistically directed of all of them. There's just nice little sense to the way it tries to capture different scenes, the way blood is used, the color schemes. There's this nice little tense dinner scene where people are eating and the little sounds around them, the way it kind of zooms in on faces is unsettling in a different sort of way. But outside of Nika, there's some pretty spotty acting here and you can get away with bad acting if your movie's kind of fun and fast enough, but this one's trying to slow it down a little bit, be a little bit more artistic, in which case the bad acting sticks out, pops a little bit. There's some CGI here that clearly was not the most expensive CGI. It takes a little while to get to Chucky kind of really getting into action. And this movie just does not know when to end. You think it's about to end, but there's actually like 15 minutes left and there's extra epilogues, plot twists, new characters introduced, and it just kind of keeps on going and going. The post credit scene is fantastic, by the way, but the movie just kind of keeps introducing things. So in general, this is a nice, solid Chucky movie that I think was hurt by the budget so they couldn't get some of the better actors or better CGI, and it could use just a little bit of time tightening up the end of the film. Coming in at number four is Child's Play 2. This movie is Chucky in full swing from the very beginning of the film. In fact, the first kind of 15 minutes of this film is the first exposure I had to Chucky just checking it out late at night on cable when I was growing up and seeing that little sequence where he kills the guy in the car. That's my first and most distinct memory of Chucky and the Child's Play franchise. Add to that, you get fun additions to the franchise with the Kyle character, but this is just classic Chucky in full swing doing his thing. It's more of what we kind of got in the second half of the first Child's Play film, but starting earlier in the film with good kills, a little bit more of that personality from Chucky popping out, and the stuff that people love about this franchise. While we do get Chucky immediately in action in this film, it's not quite as fresh for me, and I enjoyed the mystery and storyline elements of the original film just a little bit more. Still, this is a great continuation of part one. Real quick, before I give you my top three, be sure to share your ranking down below in the comments section. We're going to disagree. There's no reason to go all Chucky on someone just because they have a different ranking of the movies than you. Let's have a fun conversation. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, check out this playlist up above for my ranking of other classic horror franchises, Friday the 13th, Horror, Conjuring, Purge. They're all in there. If you enjoyed this video, there's something in there that you'll love. Coming in in third place is Child's Play 2019. I think this movie works best if you go into it watching it on its own terms as its own thing and not thinking of it as a child's play remake because if you're a Chucky purist you probably hate this movie because it takes so much of what is key what you loved about the child's play movies and totally tosses it out and replaces it with something totally different. But for me, I could watch it on its own terms and I enjoyed what this movie had to give us. By making Chucky an AI that actually does want to be friends with Andy but is deeply broken on the inside, it's able to explore some very different things about friendship and then the robot's jealousy and it takes things in a very different direction, has a very different sense of humor. Likewise, because he's essentially Siri with a robot body, this opens up a whole bunch of different story possibilities abilities with how he's able to interact with technology and the way humans are able to track him a little bit. So he's able to do a bunch of fun different stuff and it's also basically a throwback slasher film except with modern aesthetics which I enjoyed. So it's got some new cl clever kills inside of the mix. It's got some interesting themes and ideas it explores. So for me it's not as good as the original one and the best of the original franchise but I think it stands on its own two feet. Our runner up is the original Child's Play. A clever and fun spin on the classic horror trope of a possessed doll, only this time the possessed doll has a big dynamic personality. The story works because it's a fairly straightforward whodunit where people are suspicious of this little boy and thinking, is he doing horrible things? And it works really nicely. As a 30 year old horror film, it has some really nice 80s slasher aesthetics. Director Tom Holland, not that one, he wasn't born yet. The other Tom Holland tells a fairly straightforward story, but in doing so, builds all the appropriate tension and creates this 
eerie atmosphere inside of the film. And most importantly, this is the origin of Charles Lee Ray turning into Chucky the Killer Doll. It's not the most complex, it's not going for the biggest laughs, it's not the most insane Chucky, but it just works and it's a classic. But coming in at number one is The Bride of Chucky. After three films about hunting down Andy that all kind of had a similar tone, they decided to make the bold choice of reimagining and recharging the franchise with a big dose of energy and 90s aesthetics and adding in a love interest for our title character. It still has the clever kills and the gore, but it adds in a new tone, extra laugh. It's it still has all the clever kills and gore, but it adds in a new tone, more laughs, and lots of room for Chucky to just go insane. But a big part of why this movie works is the perfectly cast Jennifer Tilly, who can play the role as a human and a doll and works as the opposite of Chucky so well. She's needy, she's naive, she's nuts, she's a killer. Like every trait that you would want Chucky to have to deal with, she has it. Now, of course, there's no shortage of people that hate this film because of all the changes, because it moves away from the whodunit, because it has kills and gore, but it removes all the scares. And if you're in that camp, I really do totally understand. But for me, the late 90s are my era of horror films. I was in high school in the late 90s. Those are just the films I've always resonated with. So for me, this is a bloody good time, and that's why it comes in at number one. Check out that playlist right over there for more horror rankings just like this one. Halloween, Friday the 13th, Purge, all of that fun stuff right over there. Thank you so much for watching, and keep talking movies too much.